Okay, the purpose of this short little video is just to demonstrate how to use Tracker. So first we need to download and install it. So if you go to Tracker, just search for Tracker. And then that's not going to find it because there's too many uses of the word Tracker, but it's part of the Open Source Physics Project. So if I say Open Source Physics, uh, that should do it. And here it is, Tracker, Video Analysis, etc. That's it. And here we are. And uh, here they have installers for Windows, OS 10, Linux, etc. Uh, go ahead and click on this, get the installer, and then set it up. I'll let you just do that part on your own. I'll meet you in Tracker itself. Okay, here's Tracker. First thing we want to do is either open the file menu and choose a video, or we can just drag and drop one in here. I have one, which is me uh, dropping a little thing called a popper, and it's going to fall down and pop back up. Let's just play it and see what it looks like. Now, it's playing it sort of slowly, uh, but that's okay. I can go back and run it over again. I can also zoom in. In fact, I'm going to want to zoom in to be able to look at this thing in more detail. And so let's see what happens here. If I step through it, I can just do this. So right there, I'm just sort of lifting it up a little bit. Then I actually I spin it and then drop it. There I go. And here I'm just dropping it. Let's go out a little bit. And it comes down. And when it hits the ground, it snaps and actually jumps back up. Notice it even looks different now. It's like a little, it's almost like a little rubber ball turned inside out. And it pops up so it goes up higher than where I dropped it from. That's because it had uh, some springiness stored in it. Okay. And there we go. So let's see if we can track the motion of this thing. This says over here 80. So I've gone about 80 frames so far. So um, that's how many frames I have to work with. I don't need to have 80 measurements here. And so let's do this. I'm going to come up to this little uh, icon. It's supposed to be a little clip out of a film. And uh, step size. If I go uh, three frames, another uh, step size is every third frame, that's going to give me every tenth of a second, okay? Because the frame rate is 30 frames per second. If I go every third frame, that'll give me a tenth of a second. That should be just plenty, okay? So uh, that'll cut down on the amount of data that I have to uh, account for. So I go back to the beginning, and now what I want to do is to get a calibration. The reason I'm holding on to this meter stick is that's going to be a distance that I can uh, use so that I'm going to tell the program that this many pixels is one meter. Now, you don't have to have a meter stick. You can have anything that you know the length. So have something in the video that's uh, the same distance away as the experiment whose length you know. And so you mark the two ends. You say how uh, long it is in either meters or feet or whatever units you want to use. And that's going to be the calibration. So to do the calibration, we come up here to this little blue icon. Here's a little pull down and say new calibration stick. Okay. So if I zoom in a bit, I'm going to put a mark here. I go shift, click, and then let's go to the other end and go shift, click. And then I go to the middle and I'm going to say that's one meter. Boom. All right. Done. So now the video is calibrated. And if I want to zoom in and position these a little bit more precisely, I can do that, and that'll uh, still adjust everything appropriately. So let's make these pretty much right on those corners, all right? As accurately as the video is capable. Notice it still says one meter, okay? So that's a meter. The next thing I want to do is put in a coordinate grid. The camera might not be perfectly level, for instance. So if I put in uh, this coordinate grid here, 
Uh, let's see, I can drag that origin wherever I want. Let's put it down low here somewhere. And I'm going to run it right along the edge of this uh, board. And it's actually pretty level right there, so I don't have to really mess with it. I could grab this x-axis and rotate it if I needed to. So that's vertical here. Okay. So now this is the x direction and this is the y direction. All right. So let's uh, zoom in. And I'm going to start putting some marks down. But I need to create an object that's going to collect all the data uh, and associate it with one object. I could take several different things I'm measuring in one video, so I can create several of these. If I say create a point mass, it's going to be called mass A, and I can create another one if I have something else to measure at the same time. All right, I'm going to try to hit that little spot right here uh, that I'm holding on to, and um, let's see how it goes. So to put my marks on here, I put the shift key down, that gives me that little square, and I'm going to say bang right there. And I'm going to each time hold down the shift key and put a mark on there. Okay. Now there's a way to do it automated, but automated is not going to work very well in this particular uh, video because notice all the uh, detail in the background. It's going to try to recognize uh, where this thing is. And notice it went across my arm. It's going to go across all these marks on the wall. So it's going to have a really hard time um, trying to keep track of things. So uh, let's just do it manually. That's one of the reasons I reduced the number of data points is we don't need that many data points. Now here it's going back up again. Whoa, look how far it went in one jump. Okay, that's why it's going to go so high. So it's jumping up higher than uh, where I dropped it from. All right. I'm being a little bit crude in placing these, and I'll, that's going to be the last one. After that, it's in my hand. Okay, uh, now let's analyze this data that we just collected. Over here is a graph, and it says X and T. X is horizontal motion. We're not paying any attention to horizontal motion. We want vertical motion. So if instead of X, I click on that, I can choose something else to plot, like, for instance, Y. And there we go. And notice what happens is the position, the height, I'm holding it and holding it and holding it and I spin it and let it go and then it drops and then it comes back up again, comes up and over like this. So that's the vertical motion that I'm interested in. The horizontal axis here is time and so I can actually look at how this moves with respect to time. Now uh, down here I have a data table and I can have time, x, y. We don't really care about x. So I could take that out of the table. Let's uncheck X. Um, there's another thing we might want to look at, however, is V sub Y. In other words, how fast is it moving up and down? It turns out that's going to be something of interest. Let's see what that looks like on this graph. So if I go to V sub Y as velocity or speed, in other words, vertically, look at that straight line, and then it pops up and it goes straight line again. So the speed is going to go a straight line graph when uh, the position, the, the y position, looks like a parabolic arc. Okay, Sort of interesting. You'll learn more about that when you get into the physics a bit. So if I right click on the graph and come down to analyze, that takes me to this data tool. And so now I can do something like, let's say, analyze curve fit. Let's see how good a parabola that is. So uh, I come down here to the curve. It says line, but way down here in there it says parabola. And I'm going to fit a parabola to this data. So let's just uh, take this data right here, just those few points, and notice that it fit a parabola to those that also fit all the way down to here. 
So this entire up and over and down fits a parabolic arc. In fact, this uh, initial drop was a parabola as well. Look at that. So it looks like that's part of a parabolic arc as well. So when we drop something or when we toss something upward, either one, uh, we have a parabolic trajectory going there. This is a tool for making measurements and analyzing the measurements graphically. You can analyze them numerically. You can take this data, copy it out of here and dump it into a spreadsheet, for instance, and analyze the data from there. So we can do a lot of stuff if uh, you have this measuring tool. So keep in mind, the video is like a position measuring tool. It's measuring pixels uh, up and down and sideways. And it's measuring time because it knows uh, the frame rate of the camera, 30 frames per second, except we're only taking every third frame. So these are 10th of a second intervals here between these uh, data points. Okay, that's some of the stuff you can do with Tracker. You can measure motion and study motion and that's what we're going to be doing uh, as we get into the uh, early parts of our physics course.